Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I understand that anything I say in this video is likely to provoke someone, given the passionate engagement of people on both sides of the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now, on social media, particularly on X, formerly known as Twitter, distressing images of deceased children and adults have consistently been flooding the platform. And I can't lie to you, it has affected my sleep and my motivation to make content. I'm not sure about anyone else. I'm sure some people have been feeling the same because it's been dreadful um, for the past 10 days or more. And I've also noticed that emotions have really clouded the judgment of so many, including journalists, media outlets, commentators, and this emotional bias has hindered their ability, or all of these people's ability, to think clearly, to analyze the situation that is happening over in the Middle East accurately, and to share credible information. And because of this, because of this heightened emotion, this clouded emotion, there's a noticeable stream of propaganda and falsehoods that have been spreading like wildfire across social media and has been damaging people's credibility. Now, I'm not going to name names. I think you can work out exactly who they are. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a very graphic photo or video for it to be then community noted, telling me it's either AI or it's from a completely different conflict, or it's actually happened years ago. It's not part of this timeline. So in this video, for those who are taking sides and refusing to hear the other side out of fears of being called anti-Semitic or a terrorist sympathizer I've seen as well, there is in fact a third side and I'd like to share that with you today in this video. It's important to note you can still maintain your values whilst continuing to call out things that are incorrect or just not right. So what do I mean by this? Well, take two examples. Number one, you can empathize with innocent Palestinians who are caught in this turmoil whilst simultaneously condemning a terrorist organization known as Hamas that have used methods such as kidnappings, killings, and various other crimes since the 1980s. And you can also call out people who have been sympathizing with this said group. On the other hand, you can also sympathize with the innocent Israelis affected by this crisis on October the 7th, whilst denouncing Israel's regime including the bombing of civilians, shutting off the water, food, electricity and internet access, the use of white phosphorus, which causes deep thermal and chemical burns to the human skin. No idea why would you, you would use such a weapon. And those celebrating the sufferings of Palestinians and horrific actions known as, quote, Zionists. Now, there are always two sides to a coin. It's important to make a clear distinction between whether you are supporting the innocent or the guilty. Hamas are guilty of unspeakable crimes. Israel are guilty of unspeakable crimes and many other things that go against the West. Now, I'm not going to sit here and claim that I have all the answers to this conflict. I mean, truth be told, 
I acknowledge my limited knowledge to this particular conflict. And I must admit that my understanding of this conflict remains a work in progress. However, it doesn't take an expert to realize that something isn't right. For instance, why did an Egyptian intelligence official come out and say that Israel ignored repeated warnings of an impending attack or something big? For then the PM's office to come out and say, actually, this is fake news. But then the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, backed up these claims. Watch for yourself. We heard from the administration there seems to have been a failure of intelligence as well. Uh, we're not quite sure how we missed it. We're not quite sure how Israel missed it. We know that it, it, Egypt had warned the Israelis three days prior that an event, event like this could happen. We know that this had been planned perhaps as long as a year ago. Notice what he said at the end there. We know that this had been planned for as long as a year now. Why isn't anyone asking questions about these comments? Surely, if this is a complete negligence from the Israeli government to its people, everyone should be at least asking questions regarding this. Before this attack, Netanyahu's support was waning. And it wasn't looking good, to say the least, because the government, which has a comfortable majority within its parliament, passed into law in July the first planned change and so-called reasonableness bill. And this bill removed the power of the Supreme Court and lower courts to cancel government decisions deemed extremely unreasonable. That's worrying. So basically, getting rid of the court system. Protesters then hit the streets in the thousands and thousands and thousands. And the demands was that Netanyahu is to resign and to scrap this ridiculous bill, which was supported by Netanyahu's political rivals, as well as former top officials in Israel's military, intelligence and security services. Also not to mention former chief justices and prominent legal figures and business leaders, amongst others. A huge amount of opposition. Not to mention that hundreds of military reservists, including Air Force pilots, crucial to Israel's defence, have threatened to refuse to report for service. Well, after the attacks, the polls show that Israelis believe the Hamas attack exposed a domestic leadership debacle. Two thirds prefer literally anyone but Netanyahu to be Israel's next prime minister. But like the, their government, Israeli's vision for post-war Gaza is hazy. When the attacks happened, it was dreadful. I mean, awful to even think a friend or a family member had been either kidnapped and to even think that people could do such evil things by walking around and shooting people in point-blank range and just senselessly killing people, right? But it led me to question... How can the most sophisticated and most powerful intelligence agency in the world, Mossad, along with the CIA in America and the Israeli government, be caught in a surprise attack, quote unquote, that allegedly, now that we know, the Americans knew about it, the Egyptians knew and tried to warn Israel, but for some reason Israel didn't pick up on this. Isn't that a bit strange? And whilst not everything is a conspiracy, I agree, I think we should be able to ask questions about this. But it's completely up to you, the audience, and what you think about that. There are other things that don't sit right with me too. Israel has cut off the water, food, and electricity, along with internet access in Gaza, apart from the water in the southern region, to force people from Gaza to flee to that southern part in order for 360,000 Israeli troops to storm Gaza. Now, this has been impending. We don't know whether it's happened yet. And if this video goes out and it's happened, then, of course, I'm behind. But still, I'd like to remind people 
that the median age in Gaza is 18, meaning nearly half the population is under the age of 18, not to mention Gaza is the most densely populated area on Earth. On Earth. So in the UK, thousands protested in the streets to show support for the innocent Palestinians and many people demonstrated to show support for the innocent Israelis and held a vigil. You have the fundamental right to do so and to be able to gather and make your voice heard. There's a few things that are a bit gross though. Why did people on the pro-Palestinian side come out in support straight after the massacre in Israel? That to me shows that there is an endorsement of murder, of, of killing people. There are other things that didn't sit well with me, like pictures of the paragliders on the back of protesters. What are you doing? That's, that's absolutely insane. There was a protester waving the jihadist flag that had been used by various organisations. Organisations such as Al-Qaeda, such as ISIS, Al-Shabaab, the Chechnyan Mujahideen, or even the Taliban have used this before. And the calling of the slaughtering of Jewish people. Tell you what's also gross, the rhetoric coming from the pro-Israel side about just no regard for, for human life whatsoever. Palestine! Palestine to my dick! What do you think the response should be from Netanyahu and the military to God? Kill all Palestinians! All of them! Not one left from the river to the sea, Palestine will be deceased! And Israel need to do like this. You see? Now Gaza. Like this, Gaza need to do like this. Oh, oh, like this, but all this, Jewish. Two options. What do you, what do you think the response should be to, what do you to Gaza? We gotta wipe them off the map. I'm that's... talking about well, every flattening them like a parking lot. Yeah, wait, wait. They're flattening them out once they're There's not, 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 there. nothing else you can do. They, they prove to, they prove to us that they, there's nothing else you can do. We tried. And we tried everything, it doesn't work. We have to wipe them flat off the map. Like, like a parking lot. Yeah, I'm not stopping. Till all Arabs are wiped out. I think, I think now it's the time that we need to erase Gaza. There is people inside, our people inside, that kidnap. And now we need to kill all of them and free Israel. All, all of their beliefs is killing Jewish and killing and murder our people. Flatten it. Flatten Gaza. That will be the last war in Gaza. This will be. Yes. It will be. It's just insane. And then you have really terrible takes, and I wanted to share a few with you that I'm not happy about, obviously, and I'm sure you're not either. So here's the first terrible take that I wanted to show, and this was from Owen Jones, who said, in the context of homosexuality in Gaza, he said, oh, and by the way, it wasn't actually Hamas who introduced the law banning homosexuality in Gaza. Guess who it was? The British Empire. Quote, same sex or sexual activity is prohibited in Gaza under the British Mandate Criminal Code Ordin Ordinance in 1936. Of course, the actions of Islamic extremists in 2023, yeah, the British Empire was responsible for that. Of course it was. It's a delusional take. Unbelievable. Um, here's one by Joe Pollack of Breitbart that was then deleted shortly after. I think it's because people weren't happy with it. Israel should wipe out Gaza. Allow 48 hours to evacuate women, children, and the elderly. Destroy everything that remains. Plow it under and annex it to Israel. This is the end for Hamas and Palestinian terror. It's just, yeah, just casually calling for genocide. Brilliant. The race-baiting Marxist organisation BLM jumped in and gave their take and put up an image of, well, 
it's a nod to the paragliders that came over and murdered innocent Israelis. Okay. Um, that is all. That is it, is what they caption it with. And I stand with Palestine. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, endorsing terrorist acts. Yeah. Great look. Next, we have the hypocrisy of Ben Shapiro, which, um, well, I'm not surprised if I'm totally honest. But yeah, take a look at these two. They say that I want America to fight wars for Israel. Nope. Nope. First of all, Israel can take care of herself. If Israel is forced to the wall, the possibility of nuclear exchange is extremely high. That is why it is very important that the United States provide the material aid to Israel. Yeah, it does show some hypocrisy, doesn't it? And next we have Black Lives Matter once again, just making themselves once again look like fools. BLM Grassroots calls for Hamas-style decolonization of America, where they decide to draw the parallel between black people fighting militarism and mass incarceration okay with what's going on in palestine can't compare the two we too understand what it means to be surveilled dehumanized property seized family separated our people criminalized and slaughtered with impunity locked up in droves and when we resist they call us terrorists we too dream of a world where our people may live freely on decolonized land. You know what decolonized land means? It means no white people. So more genocidal talk. Great. And finally, you have this guy who's apparently a writer. His name is Jakob Wolf. Uh, and he said, flatten everything. Spare no school, no children's hospital, no old age home. Delete their entire gene pool off the face of the earth more genocidal um, rhetoric. But yeah, both sides um, that are weighing in on this, pretty terrible. There's some context that I found out recently that I wanted to share too, uh, something to note as well for your own judgments. What if I told you that Hamas was encouraged and started by Israel and the CIA? Now, you probably call me a conspiracy theorist, right? We keep hearing that term Every single time something strange comes along or completely goes against a certain narrative. Well, here's Ron Paul back in 2009 in Congress explaining it. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, I rise in opposition to this resolution, uh, not because uh, I am taking sides and, and picking who the bad guys are and who the good guys are, but... I'm looking at this more from the angle of being a uh, United States citizen, an American, and I think resolutions like this uh, really do us great harm. Uh, in many ways, what's happening in the Middle East, and in particular with Gaza right now, we have some moral responsibility for both sides uh, in, in a way because we provide help and funding uh, for both Arab nations and Israel. You know, Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. And you say, well, yeah, that was better then and served its purpose, but we didn't want Hamas to do this. So then we as Americans say, well, we have such a good system, we're going to impose this on the world. We're going to invade Iraq and teach people how to be Democrats. We want free elections. So we encourage the Palestinians to have a free election. They do, and they elect Hamas. So we first indirectly and directly through Israel help establish Hamas. Then we have election. Then Hamas becomes dominant, so we have to kill them. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. During, during the 80s, uh, you know, we were allied with Osama bin Laden. And uh, we were con contending with the Soviets. It was at that time our CAA thought it was good if we radicalized the Muslim world. So we financed the madrasa schools to radicalize the Muslims in order to compete with the, with the Soviets. There's too much blowback. There's a lot of reasons why we should oppose this resolution. It is not in the interest of the United States. It's not in the interest of Israel either. Another question that I've noticed some people are asking is why aren't Arab states taking in Palestinian refugees before Israel pushes through Gaza? And it's a good question. Uh, someone like Douglas Murray would conclude that, well, the Arab states do not want them uh, because they don't like them, apparently. 
which is a strong statement considering we are talking about women and children predominantly. Um, Jordan says that Palestinian displacement in general pushes the reason to abyss of wider conflict. Interesting. Um, well, why not Egypt and the Rafah crossing? Well, this same crossing, Israel and Egypt have restricted movement of goods on. But Egypt has offered aid to Palestinians. A video has surfaced of Egyptian trucks with water, food and aid to Palestinians. But because of this restriction, they are forced to wait. And I believe that they are still waiting as far as I can see. There's been no updates on this. And not to mention, strangely, there was an explosion at the crossing, which was in fact from an Israeli airstrike. Interesting. In conclusion, my aim here in journalism, my aim in presenting this to you is to not take a side between Israel and Palestine. Um, it's to advocate for the innocent, actually. Actually, I'm on the side of the innocent families um, and children who bear the brunt of this conflict um, that have led to their to watch their friends, family, and in cases, hold their loved ones in their arms as they passed away or have been kidnapped from the other side because both regimes are evil and that's the truth of it. And people need to realise this and just stand with the innocent and not back corrupted regimes. I've consistently stood for peace in other global conflicts and believe that international intervention, particularly military action, should be completely avoided to prevent further escalation, considering the potential global ramifications. What I'm trying to say is I don't want World War Three. is what I'm trying to say. I don't want World War Three, and I don't want British troops, American troops, Western troops to go over and fight for a war that's nothing to do with them. It's just not. I'm sorry. Um, it sounds heartless, but I'm sick and tired of intervention. I was completely against it for Russia and Ukraine, sending aid to Ukraine, sending everything to Ukraine, military, boots on the ground, training, none of it. None of it. Uh, same with Iraq, same with Afghanistan, same with Syria completely against because the more Israel will bomb Gaza or the West Bank or wherever the more displacement we will see because the Arab states will not take refugees so where would they go we saw one of the worst mass migration crises in 2015 in decades where they all ended up in Europe and people continually look to flood to Europe and it is completely changing Europe and it's completely changing America and Canada and it is not doing anyone any favours. So if you feel the same, thank you very much for watching and listening. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. You, you're well within your right to do that and you're absolutely fine to push back. I, you know, you can call me what you like. I don't care personally. But um, if you're watching this on X, please consider a follow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider a sub. And if you're watching on Instagram, Telegram, or wherever, consider following those social medias too. Thank you.